Thank you. So good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm very privileged to be here with you to present five new products. So four years ago, we introduced X Pro One. Our journey of X mirrorless system started from that point. And four years have been long enough for us to keep listening what customers said and uh, make our efforts to meet their demand. And today, I'm very glad to show you its successor. So this is X Pro 2. All those features, it's dramatically upgraded. Let's start with a hybrid viewfinder. So everybody could remember five years ago, Fujifilm became the first company that invented hybrid viewfinder when introduced X100. Surprisingly, we are still only manufacturer to make it. No other company approached us. Thank you. So I think uh, most, of know, most of you already know what hybrid viewfinder can offer. Uh, just quickly revisit, I show you. So nowadays, typical viewfinder, whether it's mirrorless or SLR, gives you 95% to 100% field of view. So this is roughly what you can see through the typical viewfinder. However, many things can happen outside this 100%. This is what you can look at through the hybrid viewfinder. So you can look at much wider. So in this situation, it helps a lot. So the main subject, in this case is a lady, is suddenly coming into the frame unexpectedly. In this case, you can prepare for the best composition. This is what hybrid viewfinder can offer. And over the last five years, we've been keeping innovating hybrid viewfinder. So latest hybrid viewfinder has got electronic range finder. It shows small EVF panel on the corner it's showing you the colors, exposures, white balance. When you close up, you can check the focusing and the expression of the sub main subject. So that is quite useful. So the latest hybrid viewfinder is real integration of optical and the electronic viewfinder. So this is what you can have with the X Pro 2. We newly redesigned all optical components. So now it fits even the optical diopter, okay? Which X Pro 1 didn't have, now X Pro 2 has. Like X Pro 1, the magnification automatically switches, depends on the lens you select. This has got a new EVF panel, which is much more resolution and much more smooth, 85 frames per second, electronic images, you can see. So why are we sticking to this type of viewfinder? It's because we think communication with main subject is a very essential part of photography. With this style of finder, with this style of camera, you can keep your light eye behind the viewfinder, and your left eye still open and uh, can communicate with main subject. We think the photographers should communicate with main subject, not the hardware you hold. This is why we are seeking to hybrid viewfinder, keep innovating. Image quality is the heart 
DNA of Fujifilm. Fujifilm was born for it. And uh, X-Series have already received very high reputation in terms of image quality. Many photographers said Fujifilm X-Series, it may not be the fastest system, but it's the best in terms of image quality. So it's a challenge because bar set's very high, okay? Now I think it's the right time we upgrade it because we have a light technology for us to go to the next level. x sensor, which is a unique sensor, being, will be upgraded to the third generation now. It is 24 megapixel sensor. It's 50% more pixels than the currently have. But it's not just a 24 megapixel sensor. It is a super fast, super high quality, 24 megapixel sensor. I tell you why. The first, it used to have the aluminum process technology. It's the conventional technology. Now we are putting, introducing new copper process technology. This technology is the leader, lead out speed. It's much, much quicker. It helps reducing noise or improving, speeding up the key performance, things like uh, autofocus or continuous shooting. Fujifilm unique 6x6 six x runs, the random filter array helps reducing the more or false color, even without low pass filter. And face detection pixels now covers more than twice bigger area than before. So the autofocus performance will be significantly better. To maximize the benefit of this new sensor, we are introducing new image processor. So we are calling it X Processor Pro. X Processor Pro has a four times more capacity than the current processor. So we got new sensor, we got a new processor, and the lens. So XF lenses are originally designed for higher megapixel. So XF lenses, lenses have been waiting for higher megapixels. So now it's got. So the output resolution will be way higher than the current generation. So we are confident that real output resolution now exceed 30 megapixels easily. And also, you get better ISO, high ISO sensitivity. Now we are confident that you can shoot even at the ISO 12,800 with very acceptable noise. So both resolution and the noise, it's significantly better. So let's look at this chart. So this chart shows you horizontally, it's a resolution, it's a TV lines. So left, the low resolution, the light is a high resolution. And the vertically, you can see the signal to noise level. The low, noisier, and the upper, the cleaner. So basically, if you go to the light, to the top, upper is a better image quality. So now you see X-T1. It has a 60 megapixel sensor, but real output resolution is sitting somewhere in between 20 megapixel and 36 megapixel. It's because sharp lens, better sensor, and uh, signal processing. Now we can take to the next level. Here's the X-Pro2, it's a uh, sitting, fitting. So you see the resolution is now exceed that of the 36 megapixel, and uh, even at the uh, ISO 12,800, the more resolution, and uh, if you look at the, the vertically, the signal to noise, even better. We are very proud of this result. The color is Fujifilm's heart. And the Fujifilm's unique color reproduction technology 
based on 80 years know-how and study, makes it possible to produce the colors just you, as you remember. So it includes warm skin tones, clear blue skies, vivid greens of trees and leaves, and the Fujifilm's the unique company offering film simulation mode. So it controls the tonality and the saturation and uh, as many as six different modes you can choose. We also like to expand expression of monochrome mode. So with X-Pro2, we are introducing new monochrome mode. They're calling it across mode. So this chart is a tone curve chart that shows a conventional black and white, how it sits. It's like a pretty straight, which means the result is very natural. But sometimes you, sometimes you feel it's too natural. With across mode, we'll make it more dramatic. So across mode, more contrast, and gives you more rich textures. And if you look at, look at the right-hand side, in terms of the, the highlight scene, you don't get the washout images. So maintain the highlight. If you look at the other side, it maintains the deep black. You can still get the detail of the shadows. So you get much more dramatic black and white mode. So they are superior to any existing black and white mode. So now I've talked a lot about the image quality. However, we are not trying to explain or determine the image quality by numbers or charts. The best way and the only way is to present by physical print. So that's why we are calling you from all over the world. We have a photo exhibition at the main office building. We are showing a lot of the physical print. So this is the only way I can tell you the true image quality that Fujifilm X series can deliver. So please visit after this conference. New Excellence CMOS sensor, it's a third generation. It covers much wider area in terms of the face detection pixels. So it covers 234%, more than twice as big as the current area being covered by face detection pixels. And the contrast AF, its readout speed, it also gets faster twice as fast as contrast AF. So focusing performance of X-Pro2 is significantly upgraded. Let's look at the design. If you look at the front, at the first glance, some of you may say it's quite close to X-Pro1. However, the truth is that it's totally refreshed. For example, if you look back, this is uh, what we had, X-Pro1, side by side, X-Pro2. If you look at the left, left hand side, three buttons were located on the X-Pro1. Now move to the all the right hand side. The reason why that is we want photographers to concentrate shooting without taking the cameras away. So it enables one hand operation. So that's why we moved all the buttons to the right hand side. If you look at the top, this is what we got. X Pro 1, so side by side, X Pro 2. You would notice the difference. First, now we got ISO speed dial. It's built into the shutter speed dial. So in addition to shutter speed dial, compensation dial, now you get ISO setting dial. 
The shutter speed is increased, gone to 8,000 seconds. We changed the mechanic shutter as well, so now enabling 8,000 shutter speed. If you look at the exposure compensation dial, Expo 2 has a plus minus 2, now you've got plus minus 3. And if you want to go like to further, the set the C position, the command dial, you can control plus minus 5. So this is Expro 2. This is a camera for the professional, for professional use. The camera, we like to as rugged and reliable as possible. So it is a weather ceiling, weather resistant, and uh, first time ever, we put eight-way focus lever, so it is speeding up your operations. On the back, 3-inch LCD, it's now 1.62 million dots. It's high quality. And the first time ever, this has got dual SD card. All those availability change based on the four years discussion with photographers. So we got expanded photo ex photographers. They are quite supportive. And uh, they have been collaborating with us to evaluate early sample of X-Pro2. X-E2, been around uh, now over two years, and uh, it is a super popular camera. I start receiving uh, the request. Now it's time to upgrade. So we are introducing X-E2S. In addition to what XE2 got, this camera has got a new autofocus system that makes uh, autofocus performance, the speed, accuracy, a lot better, uh, especially for the moving subject. The, we extend highest ISO setting to 51,200, and uh, putting the electric shutter, it makes a 32,000 second. And we, little change, we made a little change on the physical side that optimize the size of grip, shape of grip, and uh, we put the new bottom, the old scene recognition mode bottom on the back. So we are introducing XE2S. Does it mean existing XE2 customers need to buy another camera? No worry. We provide free firmware upgrade to existing XE2 customers. So we like XE2 customers to use their camera as long as possible with this new family upgrade. So move on to lenses. Over the last four years, since we introduced X-Pro1, our key focus is to expand our lens lineup. We started three primes when we introduced X-Pro1, if you remember, four years ago. Now we extend it to the standard zoom. We have many more lenses on the primes, wide and telephoto. Uh, we introduce teleconversion lens 1.4 times. And now we got two premium zooms, f2.8, consistent aperture, the red batch, whatever you call. So today, we are introducing super telephoto zoom, XF100-400. This is a 21st lens in our range. XF100, 200, 400 lens expand the shooting range of X series twice as long as we have. So let's look at the pictures. These pictures taken by super wide 10 millimeter. Sixteen. Fifty. 100, 140. Now we got 400. And even further, with 1.4 teleconversion. This is a 560 millimeter, which is a 840 equivalent in 35 terms. So let's look at the key features. There are many things I like to talk, but well, one of the top is image quality. So in theory, 
the longer the focal length gets, the more likely you get chromatic aberration. So it's a common challenge to any lens manufacturer like this. To solve this problem, we need to put extra low dispersion lens to eliminate chromatic aberration. And the ED lens, extra low dispersion lens, is very difficult to produce and very expensive to produce. But we are putting as many as six ED lens, including one super ED lens, to get the perfect image quality. I think I got here to show you how the front two lenses are shaped. And this is a lens in the front and the second. So it is a big, big ED lens. I say this is quite expensive and <laughs> very heavy, right? So with these ED lens, X1, XF 100 to 400, you get outstanding image quality, even at the telephoto. We want photographers to use this lens by handheld as much as possible. That's why we are introducing, with this new lens, very strong OIS. So this lens has got as strong as five stop OIS. Let's see how it works. This is the OIS off. Even the professional photographers. It's on. So you see the difference. So how the strong OIS works. This has got a twin linear motor. The linear motor makes autofocus very fast. In addition to that, it's very quiet. So this lens is ideal for live music performance or theater crea creativity. It's not a small lens. The weight is 1.4 kilograms. But together with XT1, the total weight is 1.8 kilograms, which is about 600 grams lighter than the direct compression from the SLR, 600 grams. It's not as, as big as uh, two cans of beer, but the 600 grams, that's still a big deal. Would you agree? So this lens is weather resistant, and uh, it can go to the minus 10 degrees environment, so you give you the confidence. You can work in any outdoor environment. So at this point, I'd like to introduce second guest speaker. His name is Mr. Jeff Carter. He's been here from the UK, actually Scotland. Uh, Jeff is a motorsport photographer. He is photographing motor racing, including Le Mans, endurance car racing in France. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jeff Carter. <laughs> Jeff. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. Please. Right. You been nervous? Yes, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have a few questions. Of course. Right. I hope you prepare for the answer. I will. Right. So first of all, I'd like to hear we like to hear uh, your system conversion story. 
So what equipment do you used to have and uh, what equipment do you currently have? Well, like most people, I was shooting DSLRs. Uh, for sport, it's uh, quite important to have the long lenses and uh, the quality. Um, I was a Fuji shooter many years ago, Velvia, Provia on the film. Yes. I also had a GA645 medium format camera, which was a fantastic camera. But uh, the X100, like a lot of people in this room, was the camera that uh, they first went to. X-Pro1 was my next camera, and then the X-T1 was the game changer. Um, and now this year, or last year, I should say, we're now 2016, 2015, mm -hmm. 1.4 times converter, 5140, and now the 100-400. So now 100% Fuji X? I am since uh, uh, 2014. So all my Nikon gear has gone, um, and I'm totally Fuji now. Good. <laughs> So I have a few images uh, taken by you, but by various lenses. So yep. it's taken by 1024. 1024. That's uh, Eau Rouge. Um, those of you who know motorsport will know Eau Rouge and Radion. It's a very famous corner, but trying to it's a very steep corner and, and one of the most important corners in motorsport anywhere in the world. Trying to get a representation was very difficult, and I was very lucky with the light, but the 1024 was perfect for that shot, given that low level, and the angle using the tilt screen enabled me in my old legs getting down low. It was a, a fan, brilliant, very lucky shot, but uh, obviously there was no cars on the track when I took that shot. <laughs> so all pictures are looking very great. So these book pictures? Le Mans, so yeah. Is this a Le Mans? Yeah, yeah. all at Le Mans. Um, trying to get up high, we try and get different shots. Also, it's very important to get the people. Um, motorsport, unlike other sports, the car drivers are in the cars most of the time, and in our cars, you can't see them because they're in cockpits. So it's important to get the, the personalities. Um, and that's where it comes in the pit lane, especially you can actually shoot with Fuji uh, lenses. It's actually superb for the pit lane. So do you mostly use, shoot the low or JPEG? I shoot both. I have the both, best of both worlds. However, because motorsport is like any other editorial environment, you have to move quickly. Being able to pull a JPEG straight off the camera is very useful, um, and I do do that. But I always got the RAW to fall back on if I wanted to play around a bit more. Like the shot of Eau Rouge, mm -hmm. you've got the RAW to, to go back to. Um, this was in the pit lane at Le Mans, 1.30 in the morning, if I remember rightly, that shot. I was a bit tired by then, but uh, the Nissan came in for a pit stop, and it was just the light was, again, getting the lights right. Um, it was a great shot, you know. Mm. And, it 50, is. And, and the 5140 Stunning was shot. perfect for it. Right, so let's talk about uh, more JPEGs. Yeah. So as I, a amateur photographer, I quite use a lot of uh, film simulation mode. Mm -hmm. So how do you, as a professional photographer, uh, well, well, as I said, I was a Velvia man. So you will be a man too. It's, J it's uh, Raw and, and JPEG Velvia. However, I do use Classic Chrome. If the subject's right, Classic Chrome is fantastic. Uh, and also black and white. Um, I need to use the new simulation to give it a good go, but uh, it looks, right. for, from the bit of it, I've already used the new, new black and white mode looks really good. But Sweet. you've always got the, JPEG, the Raw to fall back for the color if you need to. Mm -hmm. So image quality, the colors, JPEG output is a uh, number one reason. So what is the other reason why yeah, the, you switched? Well, I think everyone knows lightweight. We could talk, we've been talking about weights and cans of beer. I don't drink, by the way, when I'm working. Um, because it's dangerous with cars. Um, but two cans of beer, it's been, it's been said again and again. It is lightweight. Um, I travel a lot. I fly a lot, like most people in this room. Um, being able to take all the three bodies, nine lenses in a bag, 11.7 kilograms. You know, most airlines even weigh your bag now going on the plane. So I can get all my gear on a plane without having to go in the hold, which is really important. So that's a prime important. And obviously the quality of the lenses, you know, that's, prime, that's a prime reason. Okay, talk about uh, the lens. Uh, you yep. have tested, uh, except 100, 400. I think uh, we got some images. This is what, 50, 40. This is one. Yeah, Mark Webber, our new world champion. Um, uh, yeah, it was in a press conference, and I was shooting handheld on that. We've seen the pictures, the video I took uh, of the OIS system in action. Um, it does work. It's great. I can shoot with those handhelds, I think, a, is it on there? No, 60th a second or less, I think yeah. it was, and it was at 400 mil. So it does work. Yes. So it's great. 
and then you've got the panning shots and uh, all that. So it, it really, really does work. Um, and the quality of the lens is like any other Fujian lens. You know, uh, is, it's, uh, it's, it does the job, thank which you. is what we, ask, what we ask of Fujifilm. I'm very, very pleased to hear that. Good. So I'm just thinking how to prove your confidence in front of the audience. OK. So Jeff, you notice the other side. Yep. We have a little more space <laughs> in here. OK? I've got to compete so, with that. Shall I open? Go on, then. <laughs> Who says 16 megapixels doesn't blow up big? It's by taken by X-T1, not the yeah, X-Pro2. x, -Pro X -Pro yeah. That's, uh, I think, no, that looks really good. It proves the point. Thank you. So, Jeff, can you stay with me? Of course. For a little more while. Uh, last time I met in Japan, uh, I've got a specific request from you yeah. uh, in terms of the flash, right? Yes, definitely. One of the things we've, we ask for editorial photographers need is high-speed flash. We haven't got that at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we have got the new um, high speed. We can use it on frame rate on the mm -hmm. X-Pro2, and the X-T1 is getting it as an upgrade. So we have got the fact that you can fire uh, on the high frame rate now, but having a high-end sync flash mm -hmm. and Wi-Fi capability is really what we need. Yeah, I think you know, that's one of the missing, but missing zigzag yeah. uh, of the X-Series. So you asked, and many photographers asked, so we are introducing a uh, new flash system, uh, EFX500. It offers a high-speed synchro up to 8,000 seconds shutter speed. It controls a multiple flash TTL wirelessly, and uh, it is a weather resistant. And it is designed, of course, the compact and the low height to fit our X-Series camera. So this will be available from May. So I hope you keep some little money in your pocket in time. You request it? In Thank time you. for Le Mans. Yep. That's the main thing for me. Toshi, thank you very much. Okay, so Jeff, thank you very much. So thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Thank you. Okay, so time is running out. So this is the last product which I showed today. So we are introducing X70. So X70 will be the lightest and the smallest the camera with APS-C sensor within the X range. The weight is only 340 grams, sorry, 340 grams, and uh, this is a, a stylish and the slim. I got here, this small. This has got a new wide angle lens, equivalent to 28 millimeter wide angle, fits in the small camera. Wide angle lens, the small camera, it sounds we compromise the quality, we never compromise the image quality. So thanks to the new aspherical lens, the light distribute very evenly. So you get the sharp image, sharp result the from center to the corner. As a snap shooting camera, autofocus accuracy speed, very important. So we are putting on face detection pixel sensor, x 2. So also it offers zone and wide tracking autofocus system, which is uh, good for the moving subject. The first autofocus piece, 0 0.1 second. And the first time ever, the, this is a x camera which has touch screen and a tilting screen. So this tilting screen can go to 180s. So even the selfie you can get with the X-series quality. So this flip screen is quite useful, particularly when you take waist level or even the lower angle, like this, like this picture. Of course, the high angle, very flexible. We don't compromise intuitive operability. So small camera, so you get the two dials, shutter speed and exposure compensation dial, and uh, you can control the aperture by link every one third stop. We are introducing four dedicated accessory as optional, including optical viewfinder, as well as 
wide conversion lens enable your XMD deliver 21 millimeter super wide angle. So, these are five new products. We start very exciting new year, 2016, with those five new products. All available from February next month, except EFX500. So we have a hands-on corner at the second floor, our main office, it's just next door. So please touch and feel. And I hope you love it, love them. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the day.